<laughs> okay. Um, hi, sorry, I don't my usual screaming ability. Um, welcome to today's plenary roundtable. My name is Nina Kushner, and I will be moderating this panel. I'd first like to thank our participants, who, when I asked them if they would be willing to speak on this topic, uh, said yes immediately, and then engaged in some interesting um, email exchanges on the topic. Um, this plenary session, as you may have noticed from your program, is part of a series of roundtables on the conference theme of regime change. In each case, uh, the title ends with a question mark. So essentially, we're, we are asking, is there a crisis in French history? It's something we talk about informally amongst ourselves. I've heard the phrase three times today. Uh, but what actually do we mean by this? We might begin by thinking a bit about the much abused word crisis. While it often connotes a really bad time, it denotes a tipping point. The most applicable definition from Miriam Webster, an unstable or crucial time or state of affairs in which a decisive change is impending. In our case, crisis is probably lifted from the much more bandied about crisis in humanities. And <coughs> That term appears to have entered public discourse in about 2009, quick Google search. New York Times ran an article, Science ran an article in that year, both uh, talking about the importance of the humanities and problems faced by the humanities. And we have since come to define this crisis as one uh, in which an anti-intellectual national discourse has questioned the value of the humanities, especially in light of student debt and job prospects, as one in which majors have declined, and as one in which humanities uh, faculties are shrinking. The discipline of history has been particularly hard hit. The AHA tracking the trackables recently reported a significant drop in the number of history jobs advertised. Majors have been on the decline since 2009, although actually they were on an upswing before that. And this decline has accelerated into a free fall in the past two years. So what is the impact of the crisis in the humanities on French history? The answer seems both more complicated and less well evidenced. In fact, most of the evidence appears to be anecdotal, and some of it's quite scary. We see the reabsorption of tenure track lines into administrative budgets, the decline of uh, interest among our students in French history, but some I would add is not scary. Um, just pretty meaningful. This conference has about 140 people on the program, a whopping 190 registered, which means 50 people came to Cedar Rapids, not Chicago, um, to hear French history papers. FHS last year was enormous, and throw in French colonial studies, and we have the fact that the French history world su supports three major conferences a year. It may be annoying to our travel budgets, but it's still happening, with no evidence of a waning in participation. So perhaps one question would be, by what metric do we measure the crisis? We might ask, is French history faring differently than other historical fields in the current climate? Is it faring different than German history? Or perhaps we might shift the question and consider what is happening in French history. When we consider what is happening in French history, which we still need to nail, nail down, and consider is it a function of longer and larger developments in the profession it itself? In short, are we in crisis or just at a particularly visible point in a longer transition? Our first speaker today is John Merriman, Charles Seymour Professor of History at Yale University. John has published extensively, really extensively, on a wide number of subjects in 19th century French history, from his first book, The Agony of the Republic, uh, Repression of the Left in Revolutionary France, 1848-1951, with Yale 1978 to three edited volumes, seven monographs later, two new projects, uh, one of which is on the terror of the Belle Epoque. John has also written a major textbook on modern, Euro modern European history, and with Jay Winter co-edited the Encyclopedia of Europe, for which he contributed articles on the French riots 2005 and my favorite, the Rolling Stones. He has edited or co-edited and written dozens and dozens of articles and book chapters, this is really impressive, on the French graphic arts, from the French graphic arts to a comparison of Edo and Paris. And it was in conversations with John that I started to think deeply about this topic and wanted to organize this session. So, John. <laughs> Salut tout le monde. Je sais pas qu'est-ce que ça va nous donner, mais à la tarte quoi. In 2009, my friend Steve House, who was then presiding over the French Historical Studies in St. Louis, flew Roger Chartier and me back from France to participate in a similar session, but it was different. 
Uh, Chartier was uh, talking enthusiastically about what's new in the Ancien Regime, what's new in the reading and writing in, in a, you know, in the old regime, and I was talking about the disappearing 19th century, but but uh, with the exciting topics in um, uh, 19th and 20th century uh, French history, which is basically what I work on. Et ça passe vite le temps, because here it is. What is this? This would be seven years later, and it's very different because instead of uh, you know, uh, I, I feel there is a morose mood. And it's not, it would be a bit of exaggeration to say that I feel like we're up here with a, the mortician interviewing the corpse. But there is a sense of, of uh, that it may also be tied to the anti-intellectual movement in the U.S. And it's certainly related to, to, to the election. But, but, but um, uh, it, there is, it's part of a general uh, a trend that I want to address. I want to do, do three things uh, in the hour and a half that, that I have to do this. And uh, uh, first, and, and this is not anecdotal because, I mean, again, we all represent different universities and the only outside of teaching in France quite a lot the only place I've ever taught in my life outside of one year at mighty Michigan maize and blue is Yale so a lot of what I'm talking about has to do with with Yale and it's not anecdotal evidence this is evidence about decline in majors decline in interest in in France decline the massacre of our graduate program uh, by the Philistines who run the place now uh, some bitterness may creep out from de temps en temps uh, as we go along but the crisis of humanities really you know is, is part of that you know when um, um, when I started out at, at Yale, you know, as I said, uh, history was the biggest major for 45 straight years. 45 straight years. Uh, and what made Yale, I mean, they would like to think what Yale, I sound like my, one of my alumni talks, but what make, make Yale Yale was, was English, humanities, history of art, you know, French, German, and Spanish. And now, I mean, we had a pre president, my late friend Bart Giamatti, uh, you know, who was committed to the humanities. And the presidents of Yale are not committed to the humanities anymore. The people that run the, the financial administration are undercutting the humanities anymore. We can't get appointments to replace people that retire. Uh, the, you know, it, 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 and it, it's, it's, there are other good things going on at universities like that. I mean, JP will have, have some similar stories. I mean, Yale now is quite good in sciences, and it used to be new in sciences. So there's some good things going on there. And some of the departments that weren't terribly good, like sociology, is now a good department, and, and others are, are struggling. But the history department, the number of people taking courses in French history has declined precipitously. I used to have 100, between 100 and 180 in my courses on modern France. Uh, you know, rarely under 70 or 80. And because it was so many history majors, Don Mon Fiston, from you. Um, and, and now you may be 40 or 60 or 30 or something like that. But, the, but, the, but, but this is a precipitous decline. Now, it's not just because people are blowing off European history. There are other courses that do very well. We have a huge course in gay history because that's now a very major topic. My friend Paul Kennedy, soon to retire, has a big course in military history. So you have changes that it will attract you know, the masses, as it were. Uh, but the, well, one of the aspects of this is that the culture of the lecture has also changed. And I'd be curious about if, if the case at Caroline or at Illinois. But, you know, I mean, when I started out, we had, you know, Jonathan Spence had 950 in his cl lecture class on t after Ten Men Square. And we had Edmund Morgan and, and David Montgomery and Nancy Cotta, these great lectures. And there are not so many left. And the students, the culture of the lecture that you go, what are you taking? I'm taking Blum. They didn't say I'm taking 20th century American foreign policy. I'm taking Blum. That has sort of been sucked out of the place. The, the idea that... That, that history is part of the formative experience of you know four years at Yale, and we still have a lot of you know we have a lot of senior essays. One reason, number one now is economics. Uh, after you know 2008, there we go. Uh, number two is political science because they don't have a senior essay. That's one reason. Uh, and number three, three is us. But 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 so but this is not uh, this is not just merely you know anecdotal evidence. I mean the, the fact is real, and we are we were being undercut by a, a, an administration that that uh, no longer values as much as what we what we do. And English was the number, we were not twice what the number two was, which was English. In the English department at Yale, the same thing happened. People retire. I mean, that's what happened. People retire, people pass away, and, and the, the, in the old days, they would bring in you know, famous people to replace those people departed, and it's, it's not the case. And those places, it's look out below for some of those departments. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's complex. So, 
so far as you know French history in itself if you try to th uh, think of uh, I mean we must be optimistic because if classic French history as we think of it uh, seems to be of lesser importance than it used to be if we think back of those days that, that many of you don't remember but I can certainly and some of us here can certainly remember one of the reasons that French history took off in the late 60s it was tied closely tied to social history and because we had this this constellation of brilliant mentors and I include my, my uh, eccentric late friend Richard Cobb whose students dominate uh, the study of the French Revolution in Britain Colin and, and Peter uh, and, 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 and Alan Forrest uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, David Bien and, and Bob Forster and, and Peter Gay and, and Bob Darton and there was this sort of constellation of people who attracted the very best students to them many of the very best students to them and with the disappearance of that and with the, 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 the some of the places that used to turn out many French historians for a variety of reasons like Berkeley and, and some other you know places don't as much and so there's been a, been a reduction of that but there's some other factors involved too and one is that there was that if you remember the bicentennial uh, and, and uh, Jesse Norman singing the Macias and all of this uh, that the French Revolution really ebbed in sort of the public awareness it became even people studying the French Revolution were trying to argue that it's not really that important after all it, was, it wasn't the big turning point and this sort of moved people I remember how many committees have I chaired trying to bring people to Yale uh, to teach the old regime uh, and you know and, and there were many times we couldn't even find enough candidates because there weren't being people being turned out uh, in in some of those fields so that's part of it as well uh, but on the other hand we shouldn't we, we shouldn't all, all despair because some of the other fields uh, uh, that, that are that we didn't use to study because we weren't we, we didn't like imperialism so we didn't study it you know when, when I was was in school but, but, but like imperialism which is booming or like Grand Guerre the study of the of, of, of because of the, the, the centennial of World War I. I mean, these fields are booming, but you're not necessarily going to think, well, that's French history. Because if you think of World War I, just taking three names off the top of my head, three of the major figures are obviously Jay Winter, uh, John Horn, and Bruno Caban. And none of them, we would say, that is a French historian as opposed to an historian of La Grande Guerre. And the same is certainly true uh, for imperial history, because that's a thriving thing, and that should give us hope. And I'm, I don't work in imperial history. I mean, that, that's, that's JP's job. But, but, you know, a lot of my uh, uh, graduate students like Charles Keith or Maya Jasnoff, I mean, who's a very famous uh, graduate student now. I mean, obviously, a professor at Harvard and Jennifer Boitin and lots of people went off in those d dimensions and they, they wouldn't classify themselves as French historians, but they're historians who, for whom the empire is something that involves France. So that's, uh, uh, that's important uh, as well. And the other thing, uh, simply, and then I, I guess I'm being unusually brief for me here, but uh, uh, is that, that, you know, as you're, that, that France no longer has, I mean, this is obvious, France no longer has the big sort of éclat uh, that France used to have. We may argue among ourselves that France is still the language of culture, and I firmly believe that, uh, uh, but, but uh, you know, it, it's pas comme avant quoi. And, and uh, you know, we're a long time from, from debating uh, 19, 1968, and, and so that's certainly part of it. And one of the things that's happened in many universities, including my own, is because as, and myself, I mean, I've been to Poland 31 times in the last nine years. I'm going to Poland constantly. Now, I don't work on Poland, but I'm you know, invited to, to do the stuff there. And, and uh, uh, one of the things that's happened with the world today is there are more courses at my university. Tim Snyder has big courses. He used to have eight or nine people in his courses on, on Ukraine and Poland. And now he has, he has big courses because, because lots of people who are studying history, not necessarily because they have ancestors who are Ruthenian or, or uh, Ukrainian or, or Polish, you know, are taking courses like that. So our, our numbers uh, you know, may, be, may, may be declining uh, in course of in course, in course enrollments and that sort of thing. Finally, what about graduate uh, school? Well, there I have a certain amount of bitterness. I've been uh, lucky, enough, lucky enough in my uh, career at that place uh, in New Haven uh, to have directed, I guess this will be the 27th, 28th, and 29th dissertations that, uh, that I've directed. And thanks to the talent of these people, the uh, ones that want to get jobs have ended up with very good jobs. We now are allowed to take one graduate student in modern European history. One. Uh, and, and, you know, we've been cut back so much. Basically, in modern European history at Yale, there's, there's Tim Snyder, there's Paul Kennedy and me, uh, and, and uh, you know, and it's administration making choices. That, that, but are there, is there choice saying you're not going to get our jobs? But our people are getting jobs. But they're saying, no, we're going to save money. 
and the place is bourré du freak anyway. I mean, they just, you know, they have all this money they can spend all, on all this stuff that's, uh, uh, you know, they can, they can create this thing called the Jackson Institute where they can bring in random war criminals to teach. And, and we, have, we have no, we have, see also John Negroponte, and we, we have no control as faculty members over, over who gets appointed, you know, in these situations. So part of that also is the drift of, of universities wanting to go out and get uh, money, and forgive me, right-wing money is where they're going, uh, to get the, get the, 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 to build these programs. And we, the faculty, we have no control over this. So, so the cutback in, I mean, I don't know what's going on, you know, at Stanford, but, uh, uh, or, and I have a sense of, uh, of, you know, of Carolina, and I have a sense of a lot of, a lot of, these, of these places, but we've been, been cut back in a very dramatic way. Uh, and because Yale is one of those places that's turned out a lot of people in, in, in those fields. I mean, uh, at the moment, I think I jeté les ponches, franchement, vraiment, j'en ai jusqu'à là. So, uh, on that, that cheerful note, but let, 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 us, let us remain cheerful because Fran France is worth studying, uh, and, and, and we, need to, we, we need to present uh, France to, to our students and, and, and make it uh, uh, something, as we all believe, passionately worth studying, worth knowing about, and, and keep fighting a good fight. And, and every time I talk to, to any of you, we're hearing about, about obtuse administrations that have to be engaged at every sort of level, of, of whether it's insurance, whether it's teaching, whether it's every damn thing in the world. And we just have to fight the good fight. So, allez, à l'attaque. Thank <laughs> you.